All right, here is a flux core wire feed welder from Harbor Freight. It's the 90 amp version, and it is a 110 welder. 110 is uh, the voltage that it operates on. It plugs into your outlet like a toaster or a microwave would. Make sure you're running this off a 20 amp circuit, no less, or you won't get the full power out of it, and you'll probably end up popping breakers and stuff. Um, basically, what, what how this thing works is you have the uh, wire here that gets fed in, and um, as you as you push this, you can see that it pulls the wire through it all the way through the cable. It's a nice long six foot cable, and this is where the weld actually happens is when the wire makes contact with the live uh, circuit. Um, before yesterday, I have never ever used a wire feed welder, and let me tell you. It's cake. It's easy. It's can't really mess it up. I mean, yeah, you got your settings. You got to make sure the wire speed's correct. This one doesn't have a uh, volt or amperage selection. That's very. It doesn't give you many options. It's just minimum and maximum. Uh, so that's that's a, another downside. But it does work well. Minimum and maximum. Uh, you got a nice gauge or a nice chart on the inside that kind of tells you. Uh, which steel thickness you're working at, recommended voltage amperage setting, and recommended wire speed setting. If you don't know which steel thickness you're working at, there's these nice red lines on here. You can hold it up to it and kind of kind of figure out what you're working with. So if you go kind of by these settings, um, you can adjust from there and get what you want. Uh, for me personally, wire speed just under 6 or just about 6 works great for both minimum and maximum. And uh, let me kind of show you. How this thing works. So basically, I'm just going to turn it on minimum. Turn the thing on. Uh, I should really clip that away, but if you don't want to clip it away, another thing you can do is uh, burn it away. Just hold it against something and and poof, that wire is gone. So basically, um, you just hold it to where you're welding, and you push the trigger back, and It's that simple. There's a spot weld. I'll do another one. There's another one. There's two spot welds for you. You can see the uh, the ring around them, which means we got some decent penetration there. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So let me see if I can uh, do something fancy for you. See if I can hold a camera and a, a random piece of metal and tack this to here at the same time. How cool would that be? Alright, we'll try that. We'll just put a, a little spot on the bottom of there. Did I miss? There we go. Another little spot on this side. And, I mean, it's elevated on this side. As you can probably see, it's not really even touching there, so I'd have to build it up there, but. There we go, one more little spot there. All right. So there's that. I have the wire speed on just under 6 and the minimum setting because I believe this is 16 gauge metal and that's all there is to it. So uh, grab a brush. This one is had it better days. Just clean that up a bit. And there it is. I mean obviously this isn't a perfect weld. This is uh, just tag and get on there to begin with. But if I can do this while filming and uh, still make it at least halfway solid, you can weld. It's not its not that hard. I'm amazed how easy uh, wire feed welding is. And I don't know if already being able to stick weld uh, helps with that, but even if you've had no welding experience, period, I have never touched a wire feed welder in my life before yesterday. 
and this thing is beyond simple to use. You cannot mess this thing up. Um, a couple good pointers to point out. Uh, things to remember are good clean metal is very, very important. Nice solid ground clamp is very important. You don't want to clamp on too much rust or anything else like that or too far away from your metal. Since you do have wire running through uh, the, the thing over there, the wheels over here, and all the way through this cable here, you don't want to twist it around too much. You don't want to kink it. You want to keep it as straight as possible. Uh, so you do get a nice consistent flow out of here. If you're bending it around and kinking it, it can uh, seize the wire in there and then your weld's gonna stop and it's gonna come out splotchy and whatever. There was also a couple complaints about uh, a lot of splatter and I believe that those people didn't have the right settings because as you can see on the stuff I did just here, there really isn't any splatter. I mean, I got one little spot here, but that's uh that's really not any splatter. I think uh, the people that complain about a lot of splatter just didn't have the right settings. About five minutes in, no experience at all. Made this thing yesterday, and while it's not perfect, it's solid. So, thanks to Dave for the welder. It's awesome. I like it. Um, and I'd uh, definitely recommend it as a, a very first welder, as far as wire feed goes.